Hey guys, Braxton here. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, do kind of like a quick topic about stereotypes in our community. Um, especially when it comes to uh, those that don't know about the transgender community. And even sometimes it happens within the transgender community. And it's kind of sad that it does, but it exists. Um, first and foremost, there are stereotypes in our community, whether it's brought on by outsiders, it's brought on by, you know, our own people, like, they're there, okay? I just want to make that very clear that they exist. Um, and the reason why I want to talk about this is because I've noticed, um, I follow some trans groups in, or I have followed some trans groups on Facebook, and, um, one of the things that I saw was um, there were so many different types of tra trans guys. I know a couple of trans guys, and um, we're not all the same. You know, I've said this in my other video when I told you guys, you know, start making your own videos, um, because it's true. They're, we're not all the same. You know, when you think of your run-of-the-mill um, trans guy, you probably think of someone like me. Um, you know, I was butch lesbian all the way up until I came out as transgender. Um, and I'm very masculine. I keep my hair short. I wear guy clothes, like, or I wear masculine clothes. Um, I do masculine things. Like, I have no interest in uh, feminine things, that type of thing. And I'm in a straight relationship. Um, I have a girlfriend, you know, and that's kind of what you think about when you think of a trans guy, you know. But there are so many different types. Um, and uh, two of the terms that I'm going to be bringing up is binary and non-binary. I am considered a transgender a uh, binary transgender male because I'm just ma I'm masculine you know I'm not I'm like female male type thing um, that's what I come across as feminine or masculine so I am a transgender male that is very masculine so I'd be considered binary now um, that's a bad stereotype because everybody expects uh, when you become transgender, that you automatically want to start testosterone, that you w automatically want to get chest surgery, you automatically want to have bottom surgery. Like, all of these choices are up to every single person, and it's just, it's become this expectation that once you come out as transgender, those are the steps that you're going to take. And yeah, some guys will start testosterone. Some guys will get chest surgery. Some guys will get bottom surgery. But not everybody does. Okay? There are some guys, health-wise, health, health -wise, they can't start tea. They'd like to, but they can't. Or some guys, because of health reasons, can't start tea, and they don't mind it. They don't care. You know, there are some guys that, they have a completely healthy body, but they don't want to start testosterone. They just don't like it because it's synthetic and it's not natural. So they go for more of a natural transition, which... You know, I've seen guys do it successfully. It's a lot of work. Natural transitions are not easy. They are 10 times harder than just doing testosterone shots or cream or pills or whatever. So, you know, the some guys prefer the natural route, so that's how it is. Some guys, they're fine with their chest. You know, they don't have an issue with their chest. They might be small-chested. Most guys that I know that are big-chested you know, want top surgery, but I don't know, maybe there's a guy out there that's big chested and doesn't care, but he's still transgender. Just because he doesn't want to get top surgery doesn't mean he's not transgender. Um, and of course, there's guys that want top surgery. Um, me being one of them, I can't stand my chest. I hate my boobs. You know, I'm, I'm confident now because I know eventually I will finally be able to get these things taken off, but... You know, I've never been confident with my chest. I hate the fact that I have big boobs. You know, I'm a size 38D, show, and it's frustrating because no matter what I wear, 
everybody notices that I have a chest. And it doesn't matter how male I sound. It doesn't matter how male I look. My chest is always, is always, always gives me away. And it's frustrating. You know, but I've learned to not care. Um, and then there's some guys that don't want bottom surgery. Okay. Most guys that I know really don't want bottom surgery because it's so invasive and it's painful. It's a painful healing process. And it's a long healing process. And really all you can use, all you can use it for is it's like a permanent dildo and STP. Like, yeah, you can fuck with it, but I'm not even sure you can feel like when you're fucking someone, I doubt you can feel it because it's just skin. You know, and yeah, you, your plumbing's attached and shit, but you can get that from an STP. But there are those few guys that are willing to risk it. They want to have bottom surgery so bad that they, they'll they go get it. And I'm not judging them. That's fine, you know. there. And there's also some guys that, you know, there's also a hysterectomy. Some guys want it, some guys don't. I know some trans guys that want to have babies. And I'm not judging them. Go for it. I don't want to have a kid. I don't want to push a kid through me. Like, as something I don't want to experience just because, and it's not because I don't want to go through the pain. Like, it's because I don't want, I don't want to be reminded that I'm a female. And when I think of pregnancy, I think of females. I don't think of males. You know, and that's just my thinking process. You know, other trans guys that want to have babies, they might have a different thinking process, you know? So that's fine. So, and that's just surgeries and things that the, the society automatically thinks of when they think of transgender people. There's also some guys, like I haven't really known anyone uh, that have, but I bet you anything, there's some guys that don't want to change their name. They don't want to go for the permanent change. They'll probably change their gender marker and everything, but they don't want to change their birth name. Their birth name might be neutral might be a gender neutral name so they don't want to change it and that's fine you know and when it comes to you know physical aspects such as you know masculinity femininity there's such thing as binary and non-binary and I touched on that I'm considered binary and there's also non-binary there's all kinds of non-binary non-binary covers so many things when it comes to um, you know, I guess, describing people. Because, you know, we're always talking about in the community, oh, we shouldn't put labels on things, blah, 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 blah. Some people want to be labeled because then they have something to look at and say, this is who I am. This is how I'm coping. Because sometimes if they don't have their label, they don't know, they're confused. They're stuck in limbo. They don't know who they are. There are some people that are just like, I don't know. I love who I love. I look how I look. You know, I don't care. And that's fine. You know, you ask them what pronouns do they want to go by? What's what name do they want to go by? And that's fine. You know, name and pronouns are the only two things you have to worry about when it comes to talking with people and um, learning their sexuality or learning their gender. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, honestly, it doesn't matter whether or not they're transgender, uh, gender fluid, uh, gender queer, I think they're the same thing, but I'm not sure. Intersex, ace, like agender, like it does not matter. You know, it doesn't matter if they want to go by Z Zemzer or they them there or he uh, he his and hit him, she her and hers. Like it doesn't matter. If they want to go by that, then respect them. Ask them her name. Ask them what pronouns they want to go by. And that's all you need to know, okay? I have um, one of my friends, uh, one of my buddies that I know from Transgender Support Group. Um, he identifies as a transgender, uh, a non-binary transgender male. He likes skirts. He likes, uh, sometimes he likes makes up. Sometimes he likes doing his nails. You know, sometimes he likes dressing up feminine. But it doesn't make him any less male than me. Just because he's into feminine things doesn't make him a female. There's plenty of cisgendered males that I know that aren't gay and, you know, they, they're into feminine things, but they're still straight. 
you know, it doesn't make them gay. And I know plenty of gay guys that are as masculine as masculine comes, and you wouldn't even think that they're gay, but they are. You know, so appearances, um, interests and in things don't make a person. You know, it, it helps, you know, add puzzle pieces to who they might be, but just because on the surface they look one way doesn't mean that's how they are. And that's one of the most difficult things about the transgender community is we, you know, society judges us and sometimes we judge each other and it's sad that we do because sometimes I've seen some harsh things said and they were uncalled for, uh, inappropriate, and they were just, they're degrading. You know, we're supposed to be, when everybody else beats us down, when everybody else kicks us out, when everybody is kicking us when we're down, the transgender, we're, we're supposed to be helping each other, and yet we're also there because we're not binary or we're not mainstream transgender. That doesn't matter. If a guy asks a question, answer it. Answer it the best you can. You know, if you don't know, maybe look it up. Maybe it'd be something good to be educated about yourself or ask questions. You know which questions are inappropriate and which are not. You ask the person first. One of the first questions you should ask, what are you comfortable with people asking? What are you comfortable with people, um, with, with what people know? You know, what are you comfortable with? And what are you okay with? So... You know, and then start asking questions based off of that information you get. Start asking questions about, you know, the things that they need help with. And that you might not understand. So then you're educated. You know, you need to educate yourself about all the different kinds of trans guys out there. Because I'm not the only one, like... My one type, I guess I should say, for lack, um, for lack of a better way to explain this, my kind of trans guy, the masculine, the very male macho, like that type of, I shouldn't say very male, um, the very macho masculine type trans man, um, we're not the only ones. That's what society uh, goes to when they think of a trans man. And then when they think of a, a trans female, they don't, like, automatically go to someone like for Laverne Cox. You know? So we're not always like that. And that's okay. You know, we're, it's okay to be different because we already are. You know, we're fighting so hard to be the same as everybody else. But what's the point? Yeah, we want to be accepted. Yeah, we want to have the rights. But why Why do you want to be the same as everybody else when everybody else, because you're not the same, is tearing you down? Let them learn how to be okay with people that are different. Yeah, we still struggle with it when it comes to race. Like, it's sad that we've been fighting for 2,000 years to get over this race thing. Because it doesn't fucking matter. Our skeletons are all the goddamn same. Like, why does it fucking matter what skin color we have? Like, why? Well, why does it matter who I like? You know? And another thing. Why does it matter if a trans man isn't straight? Why does it matter if a trans man, like, you know, I know so many guys that have, like, were, I'm lesbian, I'm lesbian, I'm lesbian. Then they come out as transgender, they start testosterone, and their likes change. They start liking men. They don't like women anymore. They identify as a transgender male. Or maybe they were straight when they were identified as a female. Or they, um, they were identified as a female. Um, they liked men. And then they decide that they're transgender, and they still like men. Like, that's fine. Just because their sexu sexuality changes doesn't make them any less of a trans man or any less of a member of the LGBT community. You know, I used to identify as a lesbian, like a full-blown lesbian. Like, there was no way I'd like a guy. 
now identify as bisexual because I find men attractive. I find um, men sexually and physically attractive. Like, if for whatever reason my girlfriend and I were to break up, I would probably try dating some guys. See how that goes. Discover how I feel. Because I feel attracted to men now. But that's okay. Because I'm following my heart. You know, I'm following how I feel. And that's one of the key things when you're transgender. Don't let stereotypes control you. Don't let other people control you. Because you're out as transgender. You might as well be yourself. Honestly, and if you don't feel like you're the macho masculine trans guy, that is okay. It is okay to have long hair and be a trans guy. It is okay to like to wear skirts and be a trans guy. It is okay to like to wear makeup and be a trans guy. Is it okay? It's not okay to force yourself to be someone that you're not. Because you've already been doing it for who knows how long until you came out as transgender. Forcing yourself to be female be to make everybody else happy. But now that you finally made yourself proud and gotten enough courage to come out and gotten enough courage to finally be who you were meant to be, why just stop there? Why not go all the way and finally be the person that you want to be? It's one of the key things about the transitioning because the first thing that got you here was following your heart instead of following what everybody else says. So you can't stop now. Don't stop now. Don't let stereotypes run who you are. Don't let what society, what cis people, and what other peoples of the transgender and LGBT community tell you. And now you're transgender, you have to be masculine. No, you don't. Be whoever you want to be. Be yourself. That is the key thing about any and all transitions is being yourself because that's what you're working towards. That's what I'm working towards. My name is Braxton Mitchell Davis. I used to identify as a female because everybody else told me that's how I was supposed to be. And then finally I found people that accepted me for me and helped me educate myself about tran being transgender. And I finally figured out that's who I was. I made those steps. They were baby steps and they were excruciating to make. But each step I made, I came closer to who I was. I identify, I am a trans, I identify as a transgender male. I also identify as bisexual for my sexual, or, uh, my sexual orientation. I like men and women, male, female, never really thought if I would date a transgender FTM or a transgender female, like, the opportunity presented itself, I probably would go for it, try how it is, doesn't work out, doesn't work out, what the hell, you know, because I don't know, I don't know if I would like it or not like it. You know, I'm a very masculine trans guy. Uh, trans guy. I like shorts. I like flip flops. I like t-shirts. I like button ups. I like ties. I like bow ties, vests. Ooh, I love vests and bow ties. They're my favorite. Um, <laughs> I love basketball shorts. I love tank tops. Um, and that's just my wardrobe. I love hats, all kinds of hats, uh, beanies, flat bills, duck bills. Um, like any, any and every kind of hat. I love it. You know, um, I am into MMA. I am into rock climbing. I swim to exercise. I work out a lot. Um, you know, things that would be considered masculine. I'm into. But that doesn't mean you have to be. You can be a trans guy that loves skirts, loves makeup, and likes to do feminine things. And that is completely okay. So I implore you guys, 
that when you're coming out as transgender, don't let the stereotypes control you. Don't let society and everybody else, don't let anybody else control you. Because what's the point of coming out as transgender if you're not going to do it the, all the way? Don't hold back now. You've co finally come out. You've finally gotten the courage to come out. Don't stop there. Strive to be the man you want to be. And if you're genderqueer, gender fluid, and you're watching this, or you're a transgender female, be the man, be the female that you wish to be. Be the person you want to be. Because that's the only way you're ever going to be happy. And I've learned that the hard way. There's no way for you to be happy if you're pleasing everybody else. It's kind of impossible. Alright, I love you guys. I hope you're having a tra happy transition. If not, I still hope your transition is going well. If you guys ever need to talk, I've mentioned it before. My email is braxton.davis71 at gmail.com. You can also look me up on Facebook, Braxton Mitchell Davis. Um, email me, uh, PM me. Uh, I'm always up to talk, and I'm always up to answer questions if you guys need it. Again, have a happy transition. Love you guys. Peace.